What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be drawing this amazing, beautiful Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. We will be introducing gradient mesh in this series, so be sure to watch the entire series to learn as much as you can. We're going to go ahead and start off by renaming our image to be our background layer. I'm going to lock that so we don't mess it up, and then we'll go ahead and create our main shape layer. This is basically just an outline of the entire car that we will use throughout the illustration as a reference point when we're drawing the other shapes. We will mainly be using the pen tool in this illustration. So if you need a little refresher on the pen tool, please go back and check out the first illustration video that I ever created on the uh, blue F30 BMW. That will give you a little bit more uh, insight into the pen tool. But for now, let's move forward and just uh, create the main shape of this Ferrari using the pen tool. As you can see, I have no fill color selected, only a stroke, and I like to use a high contrasting color while using this, um, just so that I can see exactly where everything is and not have to worry about a black line that I can't see or a red line that I can't see. So we'll just speed this up a little bit. I'm gonna zoom out there so that I can get that all in one shape. And then zooming back in, to get the detail. Now, I'm gonna be covering this area with these black plastic um, pieces on the back, so I don't necessarily need to be true to the body of the car while drawing those, since those will be covered later on. All right, now we've just about wrapped this up. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a fill color there just to see if everything's on point and create a new layer, I'm actually gonna take this, copy it, and then I'm gonna come here to paste in place. So now on layer three, I have the shape that I just drew on both the main shape and on layer three. The reason I do that is so that once the main shape is created, I can lock it and forget about it and not worry about messing it up later as I use it again at the very end of the illustration to do kind of a finishing stroke around the whole thing. So keeping the background layer and the main shape layer locked, we're gonna work on layer three, which will become the main shading layer where we add all of our different shapes to bring out the depth and texture of the body panels. So before we do that, I want some reference points to where I will be drawing these uh, different shapes to shade uh, the body of the car. So we're gonna create a new layer and then we are gonna call this the black plastic. And select a nice bright color. And now I'm gonna go ahead and draw this black uh, plastic that sits down at the rear of the vehicle so that we can get these out of the way. These have enough detail in and of themselves that I'm choosing to put them on their own layer uh, just to keep it clean and keep it organized. Wow, just those three shapes and it's already starting to look like a car. So let's go ahead and create the shadow and get that out of the way since these are staples in my style of illustration. And again, the shadow layer is just to kind of ground the illustration as we uh, preview the, the illustration moving forward. So I'm gonna drag that to just above the background layer and see how that looks. And it looks weird. Those uh, big wheel wells there, I didn't fill. So I'm actually going to hit undo several times using Control Z or Command Z. And I'm gonna undo to the point where this tire starts to come up into the body panel. Now I can just cover those up and we will eventually draw the wheels on top of that. Drag that again to be just above 
the background layer and that's going to look better. So now let's get to the body lines. This is where the trunk closes, quarter panels close, and uh, the door. Just as reference points, I use this just as reference points to um, while I'm drawing the different shapes that make up the body panel. And again, this is all using the pen tool, no fill here, just a black stroke to define these lines. All right. I can't see any further ones I need to draw, so not many on this illustration, and that looks good. Let's go ahead and create another layer, and these will uh, this will be the windows. Again, it's good to go ahead and get this all built within your file so that your illustration is extremely organized and your file is organized so that as you move along and you want to go back and adjust something or add something, you can easily find it on that layer. All right, so let's head back over to the shading layer and start to draw a few shapes that will uh, start to define the, uh, the depth of the body lines on this car. And most of my illustrations up to this point have been relatively flat, using flat color, and uh, I was really struggling with this illustration to see how I would use different shapes of flat color layered on top of each other to get the effect that I normally do. This being a supercar had proved to be a little bit more of a challenge. So here you can see I start to add just a regular linear gradient to try to add some depth. And the same with this linear gradient and then I bring up my gradient dialog box or gradient panel and adjust the colors accordingly. So we want nice bright colors. It's, it's looking really weird right now, but trust me, it will get better. And you can always go back and adjust these, uh, your gradient sliders, adjust the color until it's just right. Here you can see that was a little too bright for my liking. So I'm going back over several times trying to get the angle of this gradient just right. And that looks, that looks all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on and come in with my direct selection tool and make a few more adjustments that I might have overlooked while drawing the first. With this shape, I'm gonna use a radial gradient and drawing from the center or pulling from where I want the brightest part to be. And then the cool thing with Illustrator is that you can come in with your move tool or your black arrow tool and adjust the radial gradient to be more of an oval shape instead of just a perfectly round circle. All right, this bottom gradient is looking kind of dingy and dull, so we're gonna go back through and adjust those colors as well. So a lot of times what I do when I wanna take a shape, like for this example, from a flat color to a gradient, I would select that shape and then use my eyedropper tool to select another shape that has the gradient that I'd like to pick up. Then, now that it has the, the gradient assigned to it, you can go back in further and then refine that gradient to fit that exact shape how you'd like it. But it holds the same quality as the gradient, the same colors and uh, everything as the gradient that you selected with the eyedropper tool. So we'll be doing that same thing here once I finish this shape. I'll take my eyedropper tool and select that. And then now I have the, uh, the same gradient, but I can use the, the gradient tool to drag the gradient how I want and have it change a little bit. So I'm really liking the gradients uh, with, with this particular illustration. And at this point, it's decided that I will use gradient moving forward for this whole illustration and challenge myself since I've only been working in flat color since I've started illustrating uh, automobiles.
While I was working on this particular illustration, I really felt as though I was painting with these gradients. Um, and I didn't really get that sensation until I was physically doing this illustration. Um, I feel like with the gradients, I could kind of move the colors around as, as almost if almost as if it were wet paint. Uh, so nothing was permanent. I can go back and change things as I see fit. So there's a couple of gaps there, as you can see, they're standing out like horribly. So I'm going to go back through and re like kind of drag these endpoints around to uh, to kind of close up these open spots with my direct selection tool or the white arrow tool. Now that's looking really good. You can tell that those panels are starting to be created. So let's go ahead and move over to uh, the quarter panel of this vehicle. Now I'm, I'm drawing uh, just the bright area here and not the area that's taking up a little bit of a violet color because I really want to have that be defined and I don't want that to blend in with the rest of this piece. So as you can see, I go in and I click the little eyeball to turn on and turn off that path, basically to see if it's lining up with what's underneath of it if, it, if it looks similar. And it really wasn't. So I've added another color here to the gradient. It's a little bit more of a purple or a magenta, if you will. There's a little bit more blue in the red. And um, that's what's really going to help this illustration stand out. Sure, it's a red Ferrari, but there's a lot of purple in here if you really break the colors down. All right, so I just like to add this little highlight here. I was trying to mess with feathering this oval shape so that it didn't look so, um, you know, crisp, but then it really looked out of place. So I get rid of the feather and we're gonna shrink that back down and just use those two shapes to create that really hot, hot spot, that hot highlight on the, on the rear quarter panel there. All right, so I'm just gonna add uh, another shape here because I really want the bottom part of this to be to be darker to define that uh, cut from the rear quarter panel to the bumper. And to wrap up this video, I'm just gonna draw these, um, these shadows here that resemble uh, a little bit of a purple color. And then this will really start to define the, the well, the hips hurt, you know, the, the car's hips, that quarter panel and that lift that the body um, really takes on near the gas tank. And these I use flat color. So it's a little bit of a mix and match with the gradient and the flat color, but the majority of the, the red body panels are going to have gradient. All right, so let's zoom out and take a look at that. And that's really starting to look like it's taking on some three-dimensional shapes. These are a little bright, so I'm gonna come back in and adjust these accordingly. Nice dark strokes, sit atop a little bit of a darker purple color. Let's change those to multiply and try different blending modes. And I really wasn't happy, I think, I'm trying all the blending modes available here in the transparency dialog box, just to see if I can get any type of cool effect. And in the end, I decided to just stick with normal. I implore you to become as familiar with your direct selection tool as your pen tool, as you can go back and adjust these shapes to see, as you see fit as you go along, they will change more than likely. And that's where we're going to wrap up today's video, guys. I'd love to give you a much longer video, but I'd like to take this first video of the Ferrari to make sure that we have set up our file perfectly. And then in the next episode, we're going to tackle gradient mesh. There's a chance that'll be a much longer video as I'd prefer not to do like a speed art version and um, speed these scenes up 800, 900% as you see in this video. Uh, so next video, uh, I want to make sure that we cover gradient mesh and we go through it in a slower fashion that isn't sped up and in fast forward. I learned a lot with this illustration. 
especially using gradient mesh for the first time. I am more than pleased with the results and can't wait to share them with you. So please stick around for the next episode and we will cover the all elusive gradient mesh. And I can promise you that we won't be rushing through it. You guys also won't have to wait as long in between videos. I've already started creating the next sequence and if all goes well, we'll have another video next week. As always, thanks for watching and hitting that like button. If you're interested in more Adobe Illustrator CC tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Be sure to check out my Instagram and Patreon pages, which are linked below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.